This is the Rhythm and Rhymes Podcast, episode 24. Your home for everything black music because we are the bridge of the diaspora. Ooh. Ooh, wait, that was kind of cool. I'm your host, AJ Hughes, and I'm here with my co-host, Antonio Hughes, and working on a tagline. I think we're getting there. So it's coming along. I was I was playing around with it this week and some writing. No, I'm not going to lie. I like that one. <laughs> that okay. sounded like it came out smooth. You practiced it a couple times. Before. I did. I did. I was in the mirror before this a couple times, like making sure I said it like dead to the camera. But this week, I feel like we got a lot of drops this week, and I honestly a lot that I'm really excited to talk about. Did you listen to a lot of music this weekend, or you sort of bumping the same stuff? I listened to a decent amount. I mean, I think I was kind of just on that Coda album at the beginning of it because it came out. I think that was Thursday, right? It came out. And yeah, then, you want to uh, start with that? Yeah, I'll start. Okay, we can start with that. Yeah, we can do that. Coda the Friend put out Lyrics to Go Volume Five. Uh, it was 27 minutes, 12 songs long, and I feel like they get better with time each one i went back and started with one once this came out and came all the way back to five and i feel like i have a lot to say about it but what did you think about it i feel like we've had a couple of days with it uh, i really liked it you know coda's probably one of my favorite um independent rappers right now i like how he drops music i like um the fact that his albums are concise they're not super like long every single time like i feel like you can get through it a lot it's something like how you talk about some of the i'm a piano you listen to you could just throw it on in the background i feel like he's one of those rappers that you could just throw on in the background kind of a casual listen but you can get a lot from it and i feel like what he talks about in all of his projects very it's very interesting to me and then when you go look at his social media presence too and the way he moves and how he's super in nature like I feel like I really mess with what his image is and what he's been putting out so I did really like this album though it had a bunch of good songs on it and I think him with Hit Boy was kind of crazy like I think that that song was definitely crazy yeah it is it's interesting to uh watch him move as an independent um mm -hmm. if you saw like before the album came out he was doing like these freestyles on Instagram and on TikTok. And I think that's how he ended up with a Hit Boy beat initially. I'm not sure, they could have worked behind the scenes, but like he rapped over a Hit Boy beat, um, the intro, like a lot of those bars were on one of those songs. And I was just like, bro, this is, it's so crazy. The visuals he uses are in places that he is. Like he's actually building his career around his regular everyday life. And I feel like uh, other people that do that well are like LaRussell or Russ, like mm -hmm. where they're talking about the things they're, uh, Larry June is another one. Nux is another one. Like there's a couple people in that little bag. He had a bar in there that was, um, he was saying like he was sitting on the couch drinking a Henny and Coke watching his, uh, he was sitting on the couch drinking a Henny and Coke ready to watch his favorite show, uh, in the blankets or something. He said, it's giving healed black man and that make that for some reason made me laugh because i'm like bro that's where i feel like a lot of niggas are at right now and it makes me think of like how the women got like janae aiko or umi where they're like you know the crystal chicks and shit like that code of the friend is our, is our that is our janae aiko it's a real shit but i definitely will listen to this for a minute um the intro beijing and tulum were both produced by hit boy but my favorite songs were Tulum, Alabama Hills, which was like a letter he got from one of his friends, and then Oregon, which is a really good one. But like you said earlier, you can kind of just throw this on in the background. It's only 27 minutes. So I've listened to it front to back probably four or five times since Thursday. But this is a good rap album to start the year. I will say that. Yeah. I always felt like he kind of gave me like, I don't even know, MF Doom vibe just with the like the length of the albums like i feel like that's really important to know like i feel like people are making really shorter albums now that's been a thing but like there's a way to do it i feel like there's two different ways to do it like some people are sitting here making really concise quality albums that you can go back to often and some people are just putting out like just songs without as much substance to them but still having that low length like it's letting people like be able to listen to stuff, more of your stuff, I feel like, too, because you can sit here and listen to five, but then you can also listen to four in the same hour. You can go back and listen to two, and you get through that in two hours instead of going through, like, a 17-album, like, track. And I also like the fact that he doesn't sit here and do, like, um, deluxes for every single one. He hasn't, I don't, I haven't seen him put out really one deluxe for real. 
I don't I don't think he has, but it's like yeah. that, that's one thing. He's just moving really different. With, you know who's really been deluxing music. us to death? Who? Nicki Minaj. And you know what's you oh, know what's yeah. fam, she's done three deluxes and each deluxe has one song. Like the Pluto version, and it's just a song with future. It's like, bro, just if you don't release the single, well, fucking. But yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm against deluxes this year. I don't know if I'm. It's gonna take a lot for me to like open a deluxe and listen. I know Benson is releasing the deluxe soon. I'm gonna give that a listen. I'm listen to that. I'm listen but to other that. than that, I'm not about to do that. Anyway, yeah, it's just not worth it, bro. Anyway, song, yo, that boy Sir is back. Mm. Sir is back. He dropped a single, No Evil. And I don't have too much to say about it. I think it's like a an interlude. It doesn't feel like a whole song, which is fine. Mm. But if this is sort of the direction he's going with the album, I feel like it's going to be completely different than the last two. And I think uh, in the flow of the album, this song will make more sense. Uh, no Evil by Sir. Did you hear this? What did you think? you have any thoughts? Uh, I did. I think it really it gave me Prince vibes for some reason. Like I yeah. feel like the guitars on it, yeah, and the, the way he was playing around with his voice and stuff like that. I really did think this song was cool. But I, I kind of felt the same way. I felt like it was kind of a almost like an incomplete song. It had a lot of spots in it that were just empty, letting the beat go. And I could definitely see this working in the flow of an album. Right. Yeah. Right. He's right now. He's uh, he put out two singles last year, I think. Two or three. And he did a couple of features, but I think the last feature he did and this one, in terms of like the vocal range, they're in the same ballpark. Nothing either ma- nothing nothing even matters was the last one. But I'm excited. Um I also saw that oh wait, no no no. They're supposed to do a TDE collab album in the first three months of the year. I don't know if you saw that, but um uh, J J Rock put that out that they're about to do that, which I think would be pretty cool. And I, we have to get some Sir interludes on there. I'm excited for Sir yeah. this year. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I think I think that'll sound crazy, bro. Like I, I feel like they it's, it might be too little, too late, but they still got a lot of quality people over there. Like I feel like for me, it's always going to be Kendrick was at the top of that. Kendrick was the one carrying them, not carrying them, but carrying them. You know what I mean? Like he was the biggest artist aside from SZA, you know, aside from the, um, mm, mm. I mean, you, you still got like Absol, but Absol's not as big as um, those two. Schoolboy Q is not as big as those two. And I mean, is Schoolboy Q even still over there? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. He's got now one coming too. He said he's got one coming too. Okay. Well, I mean, there's still a lot of quality over there. I feel like yeah. you got Rayvon coming up. Like Rayvon is crazy. Rayvon is his style's real different. I like what he's doing, but um I think I think it could still sound good. I mean, if if they let if scissors on this, this has been rapping too lately, so maybe we're gonna get more rap scissor. We're supposed, we're supposed to get the deluxe. We were supposed to get the deluxe for for SOS, but apparently it got leaked. So now she's not putting them putting it out. That's Bro. Just fuck, it's just fucking stupid. I don't want to talk about T- TDE. Makes me mad because I love you so much. They make me mad. I don't want to talk about TDE. I want to talk about Foggy Raw. He put out a single, which I it surprised me because for some reason I was starting to put him in the content creator bag. Sadly, because I feel like he only puts out the minute videos of him like doing poetry over R and B two thousands R and B, which is fine because I fucked with it. And the last single he put out was sort of in that poetry bag as well. But this was like an actual song. Like it had some hi-hats and snares and it had some pace to it. And it was a good little single, you know what I'm saying? And I hope this means that we're going to get an album soon. Um, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah, I I didn't hear this, but I could see you putting him in that content creator bag. But something I was thinking about, bro, and I saw a video on it too. I, I don't know why I feel like, there's genres like rock that is rock. I'm a piano, Afro beats, even like that have these different sub genres. But then when sub genres came up in rap, people started to be like, nah, nah, that's just not traditional hip hop. People didn't say that when it came to like traditional rock or um, traditional um, whatever Afro beats. And I feel like there's different 
subgenres of everything. And I feel like what he does is a subgenre. Like if you really go look, like I've been seeing a lot of people doing the whole like kind of like poetry over a beat type of thing where it's just kind of more spoken word than it is you're sitting there trying to rhyme on beat or whatever. But I feel like this could be its own subgenre, but I got to go listen to the song to see because I did know he actually put out the song with Alicia Keys. Of course, yeah. he had the the he had the videos with the other ones, but he only had a couple of songs that were like actual songs. So I definitely got to go listen to this to see. You know, what did Jay-Z say? He said, truthfully, I want to rap like Common Sense, but I did five mil and I ain't rapped like and I ain't been rhyming like Common Sense. Ain't nobody trying to hear that poetry shit, nigga. What the fuck are you talking about? Nigga, if you don't get over this high, if you don't get over this fucking drill beat, go listen to this song. <laughs> and you you know, he, he trying to get that five mil. But yeah, anybody, whatever. Uh, two more singles I thought were worth noting. Uh, Hype by Aya Nakamura. She's an Afrobeats artist. So she's French Malian. So her heritage is from Mali. She's French. I think she lives in Paris. Don't quote me on that. It's definitely France, though. And she does like Afro beats, like French Afro. It's hard, so hard to explain. Like it gives me like a compa vibe, but it's also Afro beats in there too. She's done stuff with like Burner Boy and I think Wizkid. So she's in that bag, but it's French. This song is very good to me. It sounds like compa, and I love compa, bro. I don't know. It makes me want to dance. And so if you're looking for something to like, I don't know, like a like a vibe reset, I would give this a listen. And then Skepta put out a single, Get Me Up, wait, Gas Me Up, produced by Cardo Got Wings or whatever. That's the guy that's working with Larry June and everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a, it was an okay song, but I thought it was worth noting because he released an acapella version, which is something only DJs would do. And so you go on Twitter, something I think that is really cool is like people are taking the acapella and putting it over a dance house drill rap beats and i'm waiting for like a banger to come out they've been okay but i feel like there's gonna be one that comes because his his flow on here is crazy yeah i I saw this um this guy made like an entire album with skeptics old it was like some of his old verses and he put it over like it was like the core core thing on tiktok and he made a whole album with that type of stuff with the Mm -hmm. like he slowed down some of the verses and put like really slow beats over it was like lo-fi type of thing i saw that so that yeah. was I wanted to go listen, give a listen to it because it sounded like an interesting concept. Now that you said they even released the acapella version, I could definitely see them doing that because like all the EDM DJs always end up just using random verses and putting them into the flow of their like DJ set. Like I know that um, I always talk about Fred again just because I got to see him live mm-hmm. and I thought his set was crazy. But he like he was one of the people that really coined that in the past couple of years since COVID to where he had um like baby again he took um that little baby's verse on uh baby dang there's so many babies there but i want baby on that uh quality control album he on a song with baby the right? baby yeah. and little baby yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing so like so he put out that and it was that part where he like maybe he the realist they probably got a couple million he took yeah. that part and he literally sped that up into a song he took um the oh, I don't remember the name of that song, but it was the future song. Um, Turn up the lights. I'm looking forward to that song. He took that, he put it on some, but I think this could become an interesting thing that artists could do to get their content repurposed and then not even content repurposed, but it's like another stream of income for them because they're gonna have to lease out the verse to these um, different producers who are trying to do this. So I think this could be another interesting concept to bring. I got another. I got another prediction, and as we know, with my 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 list of predictions have been pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, you know, the Travis Scott Afro Beats album has not come out. Um, but with Skepta doing the Mas Tiempo records, he's doing the house DJ thing. He's been doing it for months now, and he's been putting out a ton of house records. I think what's gonna happen is he's going to be putting out raps simultaneously, putting out house tracks, and eventually he's gonna have. All, an all house album and then he's going to take all his acapella shit and put it over the house beats i feel like something like that is coming because i watched a couple interviews of him talking about like getting in the house and really loving the music and this song has been something people wanted for a couple of years like it got leaked a little while ago and to put it out like this i feel like he's just gonna blend 
those two worlds pretty soon. And I think it's just going to be very innovative because like you said, like taking pieces of songs and putting it on a TikTok or on a beat or something like that to like change it up, that sort of makes shit viral. And if you can do the whole thing, like I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. I would love to see MDJ though on another note. I feel like that'd be pretty cool. That would be a cool thing to see. Okay. Music news. There wasn't a ton. There wasn't a ton, but there were two things I thought were worth noting. Drake OVO Sound partners with and secures an investment from Todd Moskowitz and Sony Music's Santa Ana. I didn't, uh, a side note, I didn't put out that splice clip you made because I looked like I couldn't read in the video. I was I sounded so fucking slow, and I was gonna <laughs> post it, and I was like, "Bro, it sounds like I can't read." So I've been practicing. Okay, Santa Ana a joint venture between Sony Music Entertainment and Todd Moskowitz has announced an investment and partnership with Drake's independent record label OVO Sound. I'm not gonna get into the the nitty gritty of this, but to me, this deal is similar to the I don't know the splits on this, but like the. The splits that Bad Bunny has with with Orchard, the J like the what was it ninety ten? I, this sounds like this. This is a Sony. This is a distributed through Sony. Um, they were previously distributed through Warner Music. This article also mentions that uh, the people that are still on the label it has Popcon on here, but Popcon said a couple of weeks ago that he's independent now. So I don't know if this is the actual label. Um, something else I thought was worth noting on here is that Party Next Door's album is going to be released in Q1, P4. So that's within the next two months. Um, I just thought this was cool because OVO Sound is a label that I feel like has been honestly, for the most part, very underwhelming. I feel like Drake just uses them for vibes and that's fine, but it's like, <laughs> but I feel like they have potential on the roster. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of potential. I feel like um, I, I said Roy Woods has some good songs and you said Roy Woods sucks. But, you know, like, um, is Georgia Smith on OVO? No, no, she's independent. You still got P, you still got Party. And I feel like Drake, like we talk about all the time, he has this way of being able to, um, like, stay with the times and stay relevant. And he knows what's hot and he likes to, not likes to, but will hop on what's hot at the moment, make his own thing. I feel like he can, he has an ear for good music. So I feel like with the new generation coming in, maybe he could like with a partnership like this, start to get more new fresh blood in there that could make OVO an actual good label. Like I feel like, right? why, why couldn't he do that? Like, I feel like he has enough pull and he has enough like taste music wise. And he's in enough, he's played in enough fields genre wise to be able to get good art. And I feel like also, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. Finish, finish. Okay. Um. And party. I've been waiting for the album. You know, I've, since Party Mobile, I've been voting Party Mobile since it came out. That's one of my favorite R&B albums to come out in that in this little time frame, whatever. But that's kind of all I have to say. So. Par- party next door. I'm definitely excited for the album too. I'm glad that they put that out. But I feel like to this point, I don't think Drake wanted a real label. If I'm being 100% honest, I feel like he just give niggas deals that he just like, what was the dude's name? Smiley? Like, if you go into if you go into this, that there's a, a, a paragraph in here that says OVO's current artists include Party Next Door, Majid Jordan, Naomi Sharon, who's new. She's really good. I fuck with her. Roy Woods, Smiley, Popcon. And in addition to Drake collaborations with artists such as Bad Bunny, Central C, Black Boy JB, Dave, and the creation of the Top Boy soundtrack. They, I like how like they listed the collaborations on the back end, and it just makes me think, bro. It's like if anybody could have signed these artists, it was Drake. Drake could have yeah. signed Central C. Dave, he, I guess there was a situation where he offered Dave a contract like way back, and Dave said no. So that's an exception to it. But I feel like Drake being Drake, he could have signed so many other people or gotten so many other deals done if he really wanted to do that, especially coming out of Young Money, which came out of Cash Money. He could have did like the thing. He has part next door in here and Naomi Sharon, but like the rest of this, like Roy Woods, Smiley, and Majid Jordan. <laughs> Put that up again. <laughs> like, bro, they're losing any verses. Any verses, they lose. 
I, I'm not trying to hate on him, but regardless, I just feel like to this point, he doesn't want to really like, he doesn't want to do that because he could have. I feel like, I mean, but if you put Party Next Door, PopCon, we still got a strong, you know, little, <laughs> but either way, I could definitely see him having those partnerships, especially with Bad Bunny and Central C. And I think he could, he might have a new one with them or just try to start something with them now if this label is really going to become like a, you know, more of a... I mean... But the thing is, Bad Bunny is signed to a 90-10 with Sony, the same, essentially doing the same thing he's doing. So I'm not going to give you more of a percentage, and I'm already top five biggest artists in the world. So I think Bad Bunny's gone. And Central C is signed, signed with Columbia last year, and is supposed to be releasing an album, I think, Q2 of this year. So those two are off the board. So you got Black Boy, JB, and that's it, and Top Boy. And Top Boy's over. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, shout out Drake, man. Drake did bring back Top Boy, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Last thing I wanted to mention briefly. Spanish is now the second most consumed language for music in the world. Um, Luminate recently did a year end review of the top thousand. What was it thousand or ten thousand? The top ten thousand tracks and how many times they were streamed. And it has some interesting statistics in here. Shout out 12 Foot Ladder. If you watch this, you know your sponsorship could go right here. In the United States, the top three languages in music consumption percentage are a total, wait, in music consumption by percentage of the total, of course, 88% being English, uh, 8% being Spanish, and Korean being 0.7%. Um, Spanish doubled its market share over the last two years. So um, it was 4.2% of the top 10,000 tracks in 2021. And it's 8.1% in 2023. Um, I feel like, I don't want to say we're redundant with this when it comes up, but there was a paragraph in here that I thought sort of brought to light what we talk about on here a lot. The shift in consumption has been noticed by mainstream labels. 25 years ago, Latin acts like Shakira and Ricky Mar and Ricky Martin had to record in English to garner widespread promotion. Spanish, the language which has long defined Latin music was conversely and widely seen as a stepping stone on the path to international superstardom, but not as the goal. And I think that's very interesting to see where we are today, where it's like they they made Shakira do English music because they didn't think Spanish would sell. And now Spanish is almost 10% of the global market share. And now they're signing Spanish only acts, which I think is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I definitely think it's really interesting. Like I said, I see a new artist every single week, like a, a new one coming out every single week. Like it's 2016 rap, bro. Like it's it's insane. Like, and I think um, Spanish being a top five language spoken in the world kind of attributes to that. Like it helps that. I think it's became a language that's been spoken more. So I could definitely see how like it, it comes to that. And I feel like there is so much quality and so much like so much um you just have a lot that you can explore with reggaeton right now and i feel like yeah. it's just becoming one of those things you know but yeah reggaeton is it's always so interesting you know and i think um one thing that well, the last thing i'll mention from this article which sort of echoes what you're saying uh according to the recent consumer recites in, uh research insights from luminate 25% of U.S. music listeners over the age of 13 say they engage with Spanish language music, even though Hispanics account for only 19% of the population. People may not speak Spanish, but they're definitely listening to the music. Um, music has no language, like music transcends language. We know this. And it is, it's almost an ignorant perspective to say like, that our music can translate to everywhere else, but nowhere else's music can translate to us or no other language can translate to us. That's like very uh, closed-minded way of thinking. Like it's so crazy to actually say it out loud. But yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Shout out Peso Pluma, who was also featured in this article and somebody I'm starting to actually appreciate a bit more. It took a second for me to get into him, but I like his music a lot. Peso is tough, bro. Peso is real tough. All right, songs of the week. What do you have to share with the people? What do the people need to see? What do they need to check out? Give me a second. Hold on. You want me to go so, first? Or you uh, got yeah, it? Yeah, you go first. You go first. That's fine. Okay. 
I got two songs because nobody can tell me what to do. First, did I call it a bad time by Asha Imuno Riz Capolati? Um, don't know who these people are, but West West Side Boogie was featured in a song with these two people, and this one came up in like my suggested afterwards. And this shit is fire. It's like an interlude. It's only a minute forty, um, but definitely a vibe. And second, um, I got so many. Actually, Justine's interlude by Goldlink, the color a color show. Um, this was his. I don't want to say it was a diss track, but it was a response to Justine Sky. And it's actually fire. It, it does feel like a piece of poetry. Um, so I would check that out as well. Okay. Okay. Well, we didn't talk about the Benny album because we both didn't have much to say about it. Um, the only thing I really had to say about it was that, yeah, it felt um, grown and luxury. He kind of said that in an interview he did, and I did get it from that. Um, and I need a, another... Uh, Stove God Cooks album. That's my only two things to say from that. Stove God Cooks, if you can, if you hear this, you know, if you're, if you're hearing me from Syracuse, get back in the booth. I mean, clearly you're in the booth, but I need you in the booth with your album, you know? Okay, but my favorite song off of here that I heard was probably um, Everybody Can't Go. Um, he had been talking about this and like what he meant by it. And I did hear that is the name of the album, but that that was my favorite track on there. And that's my song for the week. Everybody can't go. Benny the Butcher and Kyle Banks. But go check out that album for sure. I love I love when rappers do the rollout for the album and they just say the song titles in like a meaningful, impactful way. They just say it slow on podcasts. Like, yo, everybody can't go. It means I can't bring pauses. everybody <laughs> with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody around was like, yo, <laughs> like that was crazy. Everybody can't go. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, nah, like shout out Benny the Butcher, because I'm sure the project was good. I'm just fucking with you. But um that's, that's next crazy, week <laughs> we will talk about the Benny the Butcher album. We will talk about if Cole Bennett has ears or not. Um we don't know. I'm not sure if he actually has ears anymore. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're going to get into it. Hard hitting topics. You know what I'm saying? Where did Dej Loaf go? Try Me came out 2014, I think. Heard it heard it this weekend and was just like brought back. Where did Dej Loaf go on the next episode of the Rhythm and Rise podcast? Hey, who else? Who else but us? Who else? Who else? Who else? <laughs> we'll see y'all next week, bro.